This week, Charlotte Leslie has uh, dropped by for a chat. And today it's your turn at last to, you know, grasp... One or two in there that send the shippers... Accents. Okay, well, Experts can't agree on the, on the exact day. number, but we're certainly not short of them here in Britain. So you only have to go ten miles up the road and you'll hear someone that sounds completely different. You buy a gum. Well, maybe I should stick to my Kent accent, eh? But it turns out we're not the only ones to have accents. A lot of our wildlife has them too. With their gorgeous plumage, yellowhammers are one of the loveliest British birds. For me, their distinctive call is a sure sign that spring is here. But according to Cambridgeshire-based scientist Dr Mark Eaton, they're not all singing from the same hymn sheet. Well, I've been helping with some research, globally really, looking at Yellowhammer dialects and seeing how the way Yellowhammer sing varies across, across the world, really. So depending on where the Yellowhammers are from will make a difference in the call they have? Yeah, so much like humans, really. We all know that we have, we have regional accents, we use different words, different phrases in different parts of the country, as humans do. Some birds are the same. So is there almost pockets of Yellowhammers that have each got their own accents? Yes. So the two main types we'll find around the UK. If you go to the north of where we are in Cambridgeshire, you'll find one that um, it gets it. There's a little bit of bread, this, this chatter, and then it goes, no cheese. And you get this, this sliding <laughs> cheese at the end. Whereas if you look a bit more to the south of us, you'll find one which is, goes for a, a high no cheese. So the high note and then a long cheese at the end. So we've got a little bit of bread and no cheese. And the other one is a little bit of bread, and no cheese. Perfect. I speak Yellowhammer. You do. Like a native. Mark based his research on recordings of calls sent to him by members of the public. So we can see a picture of the call and use that to analyse and identify what dialect the Yellowhammer belongs to. That's excellent. <laughs> It's interesting stuff, but I really want to see a few of the birds. Let's hope my fluent yellowhammer can coax them from their nests. Yellowhammers are found in open countryside all over the UK. In theory, it should be possible to spot them all year round perching in bushes and hedgerows. In practice, it looks like they're not too fond of the rain. Well, do you know what, Mark? They're being a bit elusive today, aren't they? They're obviously just a bit slow off the mark today. Cold weather, they're not in full voice, unfortunately. Until now, experts thought that just a few species, including humans, bats and dolphins, had accents. Cod and elephants may be joining that list, and that's not all. You're not really going to tell me that these goats have accents. They do, believe it or not. Goats have accents. <laughs> Dr Alan McGilligott is Senior Lecturer in Animal Behaviour at Queen Mary University, London. So, a goat from the south of England would sound different from maybe a goat in Glasgow? Yeah. When goat kids are growing up, they start to sound like the uh, other goats that are in their group. So, when we carried a, out a study of their vocalisations, we uh, recorded their calls, and basically the goats that lived within the same social group after five weeks of age started to sound more similar. So you're, you're saying that depending on which group the goats were in, they would mimic and learn the same noises yeah. as the rest of that group? Exactly, yeah. So it's probably a way of them recognising what social group they're in versus goats from a different social group that might sound different. They have very close family bonds, especially between the mothers and kids. And cameramen and goats. So where are you hoping that your research will take you? So when we started working on goats and their vocalisations, it was really with a view to understanding their behaviour and improving their welfare. When goats are happy and when they're calling, the pitch is a lot more stable, whereas if they're a bit nervous, the pitch becomes a bit more unstable. And potentially with that, you can actually monitor the welfare of your animals then, if you record the calls. Well, do you know what? All the best with your research, because I would love to know what this goat's been trying to tell me all <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> The UK has a large population of goats that are well cared for. The Yellowhammer, sadly, isn't so lucky. In the past 20 years, numbers have dropped by a worrying 25%. But here at the RSPB's Hope Farm in Cambridgeshire, they're bucking that trend. Yellowhammer territories here have more than doubled since 2010, 
thanks to a protection project run by farm manager Ian Dillon. So what small changes can farmers and landowners make to make the habitat better for the yellowhammers? Uh, so yellowhammers are a species which really depend on farmland. The changes in farming have made life quite difficult. If you were a yellowhammer, you would struggle to find food during the spring, summer and winter. So we do things here to help yellowhammers, like a safe nesting habitat in the hedge, lots of food for them to feed their chicks and they feed their chicks insects. So a margin like this beside us with lots of flowers, has lots of insects, lots of caterpillars, and then during the winter, the yellowhammers start to eat seeds. So this area beside us here, which has been cultivated, we are getting it ready to plant the crop, which will provide the food for the yellowhammers next winter. The thing we need to bear in mind is that this is a working farm, isn't it? It's not a reserve. No, it definitely isn't a reserve. You know, we're growing crops like every other farmer would, as well as caring for wildlife at the same time. So it is spring, there are the nests, there's the chicks. What can we do as the public to just be mindful of that? Uh, so as we're walking along the track here, you know, we could be very close to some of the nests of yellowhammers. And they are quite prone to disturbance. If we are out walking a dog, for example, just keep it close to you so that you're reducing the chance that the dog could find the nest and uh, disturb those birds. They really are beautiful and fascinating little creatures. But as for their accents, well, I think I'm going to need a little bit more practice before I can tell them apart. But it's great to know that with such little effort, we can all do our bit to save the Yellowhammer and its song for generations to come.